Hello? Dream. Hi. Hi, Stream. Welcome to a little help. <clears throat> My name's Ben. And I'm Bennett. And we're going to get a little bit of help through Ableton. There are like tons of ways to produce music. I use Ableton. It's a beat that I was working on again. Um, heard it. Welcome, Gary, into the chat. Yo. And there are quite a few weird things going on in here. Um, a lot of like flattened audio. So this used to be a plugin. Um, but I've printed that audio out, add some different crossfading animation automation, um, as well as a couple of effects to limit the impact on my processor up here, you see in the top right corner. I've grouped drums, so I have a variation. Um, I'm gonna up the ratio of this punch against my thou. Against my buddy here, who is on well, aren't you? This keyboard. I have a side chain compressor that is pushing down that crazy path. What's up, Dogen3? Welcome. Um, hey, like, hit me up in the chat um, if you know, like, I don't know, if you have an idea of what kind of weird thing you want to do today. I have a couple of ideas. I wanted to make a new drum rack which is basically this thing over here. Um, right now there isn't really anything in it. There has a couple of neat little things going on, like layering. If I solo this track, oh, guy, guy, I have to show you this plugin I have. I'm such a big fan. So I've MIDI mapped, or sorry, MIDI mapped, I've key mapped these three buttons over here, solo, mute, and arm. And so any selected track that I have, um, I can actually solo a group, which is super useful to hear like, oh, it's just pressing the keys. Like, I even want this to get louder like that. So, as you know by now, I'm all about just getting keyboard shortcuts together, but I can... <laughs> get down with that and I mean using those techniques and I think I've talked about previously are things we can do to make Ableton Live do its thing live like actually get really serious in the domain of like okay well I'm gonna loop just this section so I'm moving that while the song is playing and when the play marker gets to here do this type of thing I can set my playhead over here or actually using the global quantization move over to the beginning of this beat which has this weird intro three four I can't hear anything it's because it's muted pressing shift and L resize my looping area. I can unmute. Oh, this is already unmuted. Ooh. So there are quite a few things we could do. Like I said, I have a plan. This is just a beat that I'm working on. Let's record that in while you're running. Just hit R. I have that keyboard set up right here. Little R. There's a difference between um, lowercase and capital R. As you can see I have arm a new scene right there. And um, arm completely new. Or just arm whatever tracks are up. So I use that oftentimes if I have things that are repetitive. so pretty welcome chat let's just like warm up for a minute I'm gonna kind of mess around there are a couple of things that I see which I think what the worst thing about Ableton which nobody is ever gonna ask me is uh, disable recording get rid of that 
um, is what the heck is it actually really bad at? And the short answer is I've lost my train of thought. I'm doing some mid side mixing. Um, it's a better alternative than using the utility for stereo widening, which will apply a small delay. Are we still recording? No, we have those notes in there. We're good. What the heck yeah, was I going to say? The tapping notes are off. Can I re record? Why re record when you can want them? Just get rid of all those taps, man. No, just straighten them out. Yeah, get rid of all that. It sounded better, but then, I don't know, it got louder. What's this? And then I was off. Yeah, but I was off timing anyway. Sure. Done. Just keep it like that. You want to add, add to that recording? No, it's fine. It's good. Oh, yeah. That's an interesting way to remix. Pissing how much Tommy looks like Bennett tonight. Yeah, that's strange. Must be the beard. I'm throwing a beard. You can tell it's purpose built because I shaved the neck beard. So this is a purposeful like a beard. Things. It's one of the differences in growing beards. You gotta make sure you stay like your beard is purposeful, you've cleaned up your cheeks. Mm. Well I didn't so you know purpose built. I wanna do the opposite. I wanna have a neck only beard. Uh, so you just have yeah. like a place for like shower water to catch and shampoo absolutely uh, just so that i don't get um soy sauce all over my oh uh, yeah i had that tommy's hamburger with all that chili yeah. today that was <laughs> a tough obstacle opening tab beforehand does not start the stream yeah i'm having the same issue actually um what i've had to do to even see our stream like right now i'm looking at chat is refreshing the page and doing kind of the old you know Whatever's gonna work that way. I guess we're gonna have zombie donkeys later on. You hear about this group? I'm gonna pop out the chat so I can only focus on the words of our fantastic people. <laughs> <clears throat> now I cannot hear how Rob is going to intervene. But anyway, the whole point of this exercise is to make a drum rack. There are a couple of other weird things going on here, like Max for Live envelope. We're really going to focus on our small little adjustments to all of these little chains. So the cool thing I think about Live that isn't really understated, but it's kind of easy to miss when you have like a top-down approach, is all of these weird internal... Let me meet you really quick. Uh, <laughs> all oh, of these man. internal... Um, each of these pads, right? Which, oh, I learned about this crazy thing. I need to bring up a tab so I can recommend something to you guys. Because this is super cool. There are a couple of uh, channels that I've seen recently um, that blow my mind. So on YouTube, hopefully nothing embarrassing will come up. Um, let's see. <laughs> on Cloud Sign, I believe, is the channel. If you guys are new to Ableton or getting interested in it, um, I saw this guy. You watch the Young Turks? I used to. <laughs> yeah. But they upload so much stuff that it takes my... So, if you're interested in learning super, super detailed um, Ableton, just really the manual, this is ridiculous. Like, this guy, um, Ben something, um, but he's starting up this site on Kazan, it it and it's very detailed, just going into sound design, Ben at onclouds.com, just the guys, Lots you know, of Ben's today. Guys are, it's, no, today's, today's Ben Tuesday, which is like Fat Wednesday, except, you know, for the hangover. Oh. Um, but I've watched all of this guy's stuff, more or less. Um, I think the first one I saw was here, the only tutorial I ever need. Basically, the dude goes into the Ableton manual and just reads a chapter out and creates a video on it and he has demonstrations of it. And it's super comprehensive, like very, everything is covered. Um, another channel I was looking at recently for this type of stuff. No, oh yeah, okay, so this other guy, Thad Brain, um, who also has kind of crazy, and I probably have brought this up before, but 
very interesting videos about like this guy's an enabled and cer certified trainer and talks about different creative techniques future chord gives away racks um actually <laughs> let's grab it and see kind of what happens because i'm interested future base free download but he's one of these guys who will actually put a lot of time into building racks and uh, drum effects and filters. And what we can do um, is use this guy's one note chord set. One note chord set for future bass. From the future, re rack Wednesday. So if you're into Ableton, do that. Um, but I'm going to download this thing wherever it is. That, that looks like a paperclip. I want this. Oh look, you can buy data for zero dollars and zero cents. Yuda Benatar. Yes. We have another Ben. Yehuda. Yuda Baduda. Yuda Benatar. Name a fair price. Zero plus zero. Okay, maybe I'm not gonna. Die. Maybe Sorry, it's dude. Not. Don't you don't free. you free download? Yeah. Maybe but it could be free. But yeah, do you want to be the guy that? Yes, I do want to be the guy that takes the free offer from somebody I well, actually then trust. Take it for free. I've met this dude. So take it for free. Uh, uh, whoa, where am I going? Category free rack. Anyway, the dude has a whole bunch of interesting characters. Uh, input, qu input tempo. We could actually go over that as well today. But this is all like, you know, I'm trying to get a little bit further than the manual and talk about the practice. Um, future house. I'm curious too. I'm not quite sure what that is. Hello, Scoop Tech. Welcome to the chat. We generally have a pretty nice group of po people hanging out here. Um, but let's just get a new live set open. So there are a few dozen ways to do that. N, O. I found out that Command W, like <coughs> closing a live set, would also work. For some reason, that that uh, you know, it only makes me seem like a jerk on Wednesdays. So let's make a new live set. I will save those changes. Who knows what they are? I can fix them later. Non-destructive editing is the past. So this is a new live. If this is like Blankleton. Yes and no, actually. So this is this is what my default set looks like. So how do you, so your default set? My default set. Has how does how does it go out of default? Like you put this here, or does it preserve things from previous session? So. You let, let's say like the looper in my return track over here. I don't really like this thing, right? I don't use it very often. It does have interesting uses. Like I don't even want to go into the detail of it because I know that Ben from OnCloud and Sign is going to make a way better video than I ever could. And welcome from Morocco. I can certainly listen to your track and give you your opinion. Please link it in the track in the chat, and we'll actually play it on the stream. Because that's also what a little help is about. Let's give is he an Ableton user? I don't know. Maybe we Scoop play with the has project something to file. say. But um, I'm going to... Let's, so let me show you kind of how this works. I have a custom like master chain, including my awesome selective arm button. I love this arm. Solo, mute. It's all right here. It's all right here. It's such a big deal. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you. Hey, it's Sam. Sam, Sam Lustig is here. Stick around. 30 or so minutes, we'll kick it over to uh, Rockstar Academy. It's a fantastic show. Um, I'm a big fan of it. Helps me out with a lot. But let's say I want to get rid of Looper, right? This loaded up in my default set. Okay. Shoot, I'll get rid of this entire return track. Hey, look, it's Sam Lustig. This is interesting. Hey, look. Uh, I know it. I know what is wrong. Hey. Maybe just switch that one to buffer. You huh? wanna take uh It's future house. Ah right. While we get our videos resorted. Uh just switch it to buffer please so we don't have to reposition that. Uh here we are. This is Firefly by Scoop Tech. This is not the audio device you're looking for. Let me switch that over to the stream audio so you can hear it as well. 
Well played. All right. Some future house. Ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. Do I have controller for this? Nope. Okay. So what exactly is Future House? You're a big fan and proponent of electronic, of electronic techno music. Yeah, I mean, what do, you, what do you draw from this? What is your first impression? I mean, I critique and respond to your music all the time. Yeah. Playful and kind of dissonant, you know? It's very thick. Personal track. Look at it. Chat. But there could be a lot more done to it to make it more. Um, oh, is your mic on? To make it more. Uh... Yeah. Oh, you're very quiet for some reason. Uh -huh. Oh, well. Oh, I like that. That was good. Yeah. It's very nice patches. I mean, the big thing with electronic music is making things unique. Yeah. You know, it's like you always, you listen to it and it's like, you know, kick, snare, kick, snare, you know, kick, hat, snare, hat, kick, hat, snare, hat, you know, it's, and, but when you really listen to a well-produced song, there's a lot of life and texture to it. And he's doing that. It's sounding good. I wish there was another layer to it, though, but... There's something that I find is interesting. So there's a, there's a, there's a house or there's a dance music technique where you have a click that is separate from the body of your kick. Okay. Um, and I can tell that he's kind of playing around with the distance from where the well, click his, is and where the kick is. His kick is rolling. Yeah. Well, it was earlier. I don't know if it is here. I like this, like, road honky tonk piano thing see this is nice here yeah I mean traditionally I found the habit when it comes to making four on the floor electronic music is you do so much work and you go oh and that sounds great and that sounds great but at the end of the day you listen to it and you go you know I could have ramped up to a very high energy appealing song in 20 seconds you yeah. know and then progress that you know, if he takes all these measures and just like goes through it really quickly, maybe in bit, bits or something, then he could get to this next high energy part, which was just about at the end. Yeah. And then build on that. A lot of what I've found with doing like four on the four electronic stuff is I always go make a little change and I go, well, now it's a measure. Right. You know, and, I, and then I make another change and I go, oh, it's another section. And then when I go back and I think about my composition, I realize that I just cut out a huge chunk of my song just to get all those new changes together. And when you do all those little changes, it's nice to lay it out. Yeah, but, um, I mean, my experience with EDM, like in terms of real critique I can give you is try to build your curve a little bit more, I guess, what's, what's it called? Like have more of a high peak kind of in the middle or, you know, build well, you know me, arc. I always like to punch the listener right, in the right. face by just hitting them with something. But I know? mean, in the case of, um, of Scoop Text track that we just listened to, like a lot of EDM tracks that you mix um, as a, in like a set, right, are like actually a minute or two longer than the normal like three, three and a half minute kind of tune, right? Because you have like a longer build up to kind of beat match and mix the track with the track that you're playing currently and then kind of have some play over um, between the two tracks where you're kind of mixing and cutting between the two and adding, you know, effects. And then by the time the buildup for the next track is coming along, then you can fully carry over and you have the second half of that song to switch into your next song, you know? 
And so, I mean, people like electronic music because it's pretty simple to make, but the truth is when it gets to good electronic music, you're still going to have to deal with, you know, mode changes, oh, yeah. no, musical real music changes theories. that are actually in some ways more subtle and more complex than normal music because you're, you're not dealing with just notes on a piano. Sorry, I'm touching a piano no, in front of me. You okay. can't see it. <laughs> a gesture. Yeah. But it's more like dealing with, you know, <laughs> filters and making sure that all that change, you know, filters and effects levels, and it's actually a lot more complex, and there isn't, you know, like, composition for it. There isn't, it's, it's not like, it's an art, not like a science so much as, you know, music's an art, but it's very scientifically notated and explained. Yeah, so let but me show the new, you... But um... the new age electronic stuff, it's, it's all, it's a lot of, you know, personality and user experience and personal experience working with it to learn filters and uh, you know learn what that knob does in your yeah in your software definitely you should uh, you should tinker right like if you blow up really quickly there's a lot of pressure to make stuff all the time and people should have more time to play like it whatever they're doing you know but i wanted to show you kind of this default set problem okay so if i have a looper in are here these I like can, these are um so these are all tracks but are they like sends um, these are let's th these are sends and those sends. are those are tracks. Yes, these are tracks, and All then right. these are returns. Okay. There aren't really sends in Ableton. What you can do is group tracks together, um, and create a send that way. And it's a little bit easier to see in this view. Right. So we have sends through each bus here. Oh neat. So I can send you know audio and MIDI both through to C to the looper. Right. You could send MIDI through in Ableton. Well, if you have a sound generator, but yes, you can actually route MIDI as well. That's pretty cool. So you can take I'm MIDI an, from I'm an a certain FL studio guy, so that's different. You can take MIDI from a particular channel or device, um, which we might get into later, is plugging in multiple MIDI controllers and assigning them to different tracks, right? Cool. And then you can also send that output to external hardware or reroute that inside of the software. It's pretty hardcore stuff. Hmm. Um, even send it to external software. Um, right now, you can see this orange box um, around these areas. That's because I have a control script set up for a device that I do not have plugged in, but you know it still loads that up. You can see over here in the link MIDI page of our preferences. This is for the KMix controller. That new and thing so, you got. Yeah. Very cool. And so if I switch it over to none, that box will go away. But it's not plugged in. I'll fix it later. Um, I just have to plug it in. So. Let's see, I can ungroup this the same way that I grouped it. Basically, you right click and you ungroup. Control Shift G. Um, so, last point I wanted to make is this, this whole default set thing is all in the settings, right? And I'm sure a lot of DAWs have this. Um, so, I will delete this return, right? Done. Um, and then in my preferences, I can say file and folder, save current set as default, done. And it's cool. like, are you sure? Yes. Okay, cool. If you don't believe That's me... That's important to know, so you can customize and personalize. I will not save the untitled the project. Makes an experience. And as you can see, it looks the exact darn same as we had before. Cool. So that was super cool. Um, let's get into... A, an, an instrument that is in live light and live standard a lot of instruments aren't because Ableton is going to nickel and dime you and you have a lot of options for um, other tools anyway but here's an empty drum rack um, I can't really zoom too far into it but maybe if I put my arm over it you can see certain features of it because I'm wearing green today it's mostly working <laughs> nope <laughs> All right. Um, so what it is are all of these pads we have from D negative two all the way up to E or G eight. I think C one is the default set. I don't know. Um, I don't want to get in too much into the detail of what all these things do. We have our little helper guy, which is like our short. But these are empty right now. You haven't loaded right. audio into them. I haven't loaded anything into them. But I have an option to drop an instrument or a sample into them. And so uh, one thing that I've been meaning to do lately to kind of get back ahead of my production process is um, go through my samples and start adding these Japanese funk clips to it. So I have, uh, yeah, <laughs> this is cool. I'm looking for a Kiko Yano um, 
I think the first album of hers I heard is pretty crazy. So, 1970s. This is an hour long audio file, so it's gonna take a minute to stream that guy in here. Unless I crash Ableton, which happens sometimes. Alright, so now that's there. I don't need to preview it. Um, but whenever I hear something like that, Like that's just a free, that's a free cut. Like that is a free loop, that'd be great for a beat, right? And you're like, okay. What's the one that you sent me recently? What was that called? That I sent you recently? Yeah, I want that. There's this other track you were showing me. It was like, you're, last week we were talking about, you're like, oh, you're a, uh, Was it the Aesop Rock track? No, it was some kind of funk track. You were like, oh, look up whatever video. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that? Okay. Um. Rock and roll. Oh, right, right. Rock and roll McDonald's. No, oh. rock and roll gangster. Gangster. I love this song. I want to. Alon, yeah, there rock. we go. This song is so good. Oh, uh, let's all watch a commercial. Alexa, play music from the 80s. No. This is the best song ever. Ooh. <laughs> So usually, <laughs> when I'm planning on sampling something later, yeah. um, I'll add it to this playlist. Things to dig Diggin. in. Yeah. Dig in. Because that's... Hey, play it. No. Oh. <laughs> this is somebody else's thing. But I'm looking for a section. I know on this album there are quite a few breaks and little things that we can take up. Um, here we can see the breaks between tracks. I want just something that I can pull drums out of. <laughs> Wait, no, 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 keep it going. Looks like it's about to get to drum. That's gonna make a funky track. Dope. Sold. So, I wanna copy this out of here and actually isolate it, which will take quite some time. But if I hit Command J, it'll print audio um, of just that section. Like normally if I had that area selected, I can only, you know, see, like let's say I isolated this instead of cutting it. Then I'll be able to see just that portion here. And so in order to save a little bit of time, do, do, do. I have to check my mute button again. Or maybe it's M. Why is it M? Oh, that's because it's the default mapping. Great. Anyway. So. Um, Alright. Excellent. So we're going to take that guy. And I want to add. I have a new technique. I learned about. So we were talking about warp markers a little while ago. Put in the swap. Swapping labels. Oh boy. <laughs> Garion, that is a ancient technique. What did he say? He says if you really like a track, you put it in swap, as in swapping the labels on records to full sucker DJs. <laughs> so, um, one thing I want to do is delete all of these warp markers. Do you know about this? Are so, these automatically put in? So automatically, Ableton will detect these transients. Right, right, right. Right? And if I put in, if I double click one of those transients, like, or I do that, like, if I have a warp marker selected, I can Why press... Why do you want to delete them, though? They seem so cool. Well, because it's, it's a timing-based thing, right? So, like, earlier on, we went through how warp modes kind of work. If I have this section selected, I can change how we preserve transients. So if I have fast forward to transients and shorten the envelope, I can do this. Right? But let's say I don't want all of those. I can delete those transients by, by making them black here, this little gray region, and pressing backspace. And now they're gone. 
So that means that anything oh, I no. wanted to do with that tone at that point, gone. So instead of all of us playing da 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 da, I only have the two that I, that are left over, and they're these little tiny gray arrows. You can see them on the stream though. Believe in me. Weird, right? It's I like that. Um, I like um, it a lot. So that amplitude envelope is not particularly useful right now, but I can take this guy. Uh, actually, let's do a f more complex. Disable looping for a minute. All right, cool. And I'll take this. So what I want to do before I chop this into a drum rack, because we could just take like this section, right? The snare. And I'll put that guy over here. Whoa. Let's zoom in here real quick. Uh, do 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 do. There it is. There it is. So this dude is what I'm talking about. It's kind of like a flammed hit. So normally what you could do with the drum rack is you're going to take a sample. Grab a little, grab up the next drum. Uh, do we have stuff to fade it? No, 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 not the two hits. You don't know what I'm doing. I get that. I understand. So here, we can take that clip and we can drag it into C, and it will use that region as a sample. And so instead of having this kind of, I mean, it's a, you know, s simpler, which is this version of the sample. It also comes with live. Um, if you go down to, it's going to be C on octave one. I can move this to where you can hit it. So we have a velocity sensitive sample. If I turn it down, it'll always play the same note. If I turn it all the way up, the harder you hit it, the harder that thing will hit. Which is neat. And we can filter. We can do a bunch of other cool stuff. More filter. Uh, 24 and 12 dB is like the tolerance of the filter, or how quickly it falls off. And that's useful for some things. But if I know that I'm going to use a bunch of hits in a sequence, then I'm going to go back to my sample view and pick those hits first. Awesome. So, this is a little bit... I want that sound. I, I do not want the peak here. If I start there, I don't have any of that impact. Right? So I'll double click to make a new warp marker at the beginning of that transient. And same here. And we can talk about zero crossing and all that stuff, but I'll just pick an area that's kind of gray or really close to the line so that the margin of error for not having a zero crossing point is really low. All right. And the whole point, I think we've discussed previously, of having your samples chosen, like really if we get down to the sample level, Right, where you can see like these are pretty discrete lines. Um, I remember that earthquake. Is the crossing point will be where the left channel crosses zero, um, or both if you can get it. That's sometimes not the case. So really quickly, I'm just going to punch through all of these guys. I really should just be a little bit less delicate with the process. As much as I like zooming into waveforms, that's not particularly effective. I mean efficient. All right. So you, 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 your friend. Garen, what is the zero crossing point? Hopefully the delay of the stream is going to be uh, <laughs> informative enough, but a zero crossing point is right here. You can see, so above this line, yes, <laughs> above this line um, would be in digital audio. You have two ser you have two or two channels that have 16-bit, let's say, in a wave, um, a value that they can represent in binary, right? So what is that like? 
65,000 or something like that. And if it's an unsigned integer, or if it's a signed integer, then it's half of that value. So let's look up really quickly how much numbers in 16-bit. Is, is this any good? Int, yes. Oh, cool. I don't know what that is. Uh, size, uh, or max count, I guess. This is a kind of common game thing and computer thing, really. Tell me about it. So 32,000. I just saw it. Up, scroll up. 32,768. Right. Um, and so. Basically, in, on the register, the unsigned computer, range is zero to sixty-five thousand five hundred thirty-five. Right, and so we use a bit at the beginning of that, to, you know, six of those sixteen switches to count up. Anyway, for each channel, we have a positive and negative value um, that go to your digital to analog converter that makes sound on your speakers, and those samples, whether it is, you know positive or negative 32,000 above this zero crossing point, which is where the integer crosses zero, um, that will keep the sample from producing a pop. It's a very short impulse type of signal. Um, like if I had maybe a, I can't do a full, I can't do a full music, like digital music lesson today, but I think I might veer off into that realm soon because it is quite interesting. And I would love to. Give me some samples. Let me just Load it a in. second. So I'm going to finish marking up my wave territory here. Warp markers are, double or are very important. Um, and let's just kind of, yeah, let's let that go. So I have here, I don't know. What's I think that? you missed. Nah, yeah. I don't know what that is. What is that? That little yeah, no, there. No, 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 no. Before the last one. What? Before the last marker. Oh, okay. See that? Yeah. Right I don't know there. what that is. I guess that's useful. Sure, I'll take it. Anyway, so what I want to do is I want to right click. And I'm going to slice that to new MIDI track. Yes, Garion, you know about the effect. Good. And I want to slice it once per warp marker. I'm going to use just a built in zero velocity effect. Um, and I choose zero velocity so I do not have to worry about. Uh, let's see. Let's preserve warp timing because that'll allow us to stretch the sample while we're running. Um, cool, so now we have a new drum rack. Um, right. So, what we need to do next. Alright, hold on. Just a second there, Turbo. Um, let's get something a little bit. Change my tempo. And let's unmute this guy. Right. And so we're, and I think I've seen Jake do this on the stream as well, but we are basically re-timing this loop of audio. Turn me down a little bit so I can keep playing. Um, this is distracting. We're re-timing this, or re-timing, we're cutting each of these sections that we've marked in this loop of audio into this MIDI bank, which we have 15 notes of. Um, yes, loop points are quite difficult to find. You know, my favorite tool for finding looping points, I have, a, I have an edit button here in my sample previewer that will open up this sample in Audacity. And Audacity is um, the Lord's DAW. Because we can actually get really, 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 really deep down and see these little points here. There's a blue point, point to point. That's interpolation between two different samples. Um, if I even make this larger, you can see that there's some kind of offset here. Whoa. But if I select an area and hit Z, then it'll find the zero crossing point which is convenient, but look how it crosses over on the left channel, or the first channel, and not the right channel. So that is a very, very, very important thing, because if I started it from here, you'd hear a click. Not important. Don't save changes. 
even though we can save him and go back to Ableton. Um, but let me give you some audio, and let's see if you can come up with a pattern in less than five minutes. Oh, Two. I'm gonna put this down. Sorry. Hold on a sec. Oh, let me do that over here. Hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. All right, ready? Can I get like a metro? Like that. Some. Neat. Let me help you out there. All right. Hold on, Trevor. All right. So, one more thing we can do um, is we can actually give you some record quantization. Oh, cool. Let's help you out. So, how about maybe eighth note? That's gonna mess with my head, but go ahead. Let's do sixteenth note. My head for the audience. So you'll notice in this first in this first uh, track, these sixteenth notes, all these button presses are kind of all over the place. All these slices are all over the place. Which isn't bad, but they're not on this grid. And so you'll see in the next recording that we do that... I don't even know the BPM now. This is the BPM. It is 90. That's 89. I'll make it 90. Can I just get a metric? So, you want to count in as well? No. Okay. So, now all of these are quantized to start on the 16th note marker, as we just Probably recorded. move it over to the beginning now. Well, let's see what you got. Oh, I don't want to do that. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. So, instead of moving it over, what I'm going to do is set that to 1. Done. 1 and done. Are these cutting off so they'll stop when I let go of the button? Yeah. Uh, let's make this a loop. Maybe that's two bars long. Um, that starts on the one. And... Bliggity blam. And you know what? Maybe I want to adjust your pattern. Yeah, and... Oh, oh. You need something, yeah, just... No, you need it right. on that... Yeah, just over one more square. This one? Yeah, just over one more square. Perfect, thank you. No problem. What do you call those steps? I like this, but I want to change the starting point. Dun, dun, dun. Mm. Pull it out, pull it out. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, let's see. Bum. I could just be playing and actually get comfortable with these samples and actually come up with something decent. There we go. With minor adjustments, I'll call it that. We've come up with a pretty good cut, or a chop, as it's called of this sample so we can get into more presets um, very soon I only have a minute but I want to show you another preset that we have for spatializing like in the same way that we can d dive into racks it's kind of an introduction to racks there's another type of rack in Ableton and what I use is something called simple split which is allows us to solo and filter each section as well as widen and mix oh that's good that's pretty good it's kinda low but this is the first step at kind of retouching a sample and getting to the point where we actually have... Do you want to add that into it? Well, let's hear it. Turn the filter off. 
Yeah, all right. Check us out. So let's just add that in. This little plus button. We can overdub MIDI. Ready? Ready to go? Do it. I'm not playing anymore. I beg to differ. You know what it is? Maybe this? Do it. No, oh, that's not where I wanted it. Okay. There you want it? No, I don't like it. I don't like it. This is, I like that. That's great. Cool. So, we only have a couple of minutes left. Produce me! So we have, um, it is a type of band fast filter. It's actually a combination of this device called multi-band di multi dynamics, and you can use it to inspect and compress different layers of audio within Ableton. And I use a combination of multi-band dynamics and utility to expand the sound and spread each area into different sections. So for example, if I wanted to have an effect that's only on the high layer, right? Like, I don't know, a tremolo type effect. So I'll grab a panner, turn that up. So it's gonna shuffle left and right. Let's turn that to a triangle. And then we'll turn the phase down so that they overlay each other. And maybe turn that up. That's good. I like that. Put the other channels back. Give us some mids back. This is go really well with like a nice beat Let's up. Let's put some there. reverb on the mids. Sure. Yeah. So it doesn't sound so cut. So in the same sense, we'll go into this mid chain. And actually, what I might want to do, oh, it doesn't work that way. Anyway, um, is take. Where is it? This I guess a reverb. I could actually pass it kind of through, but we'll do that later. Maybe I can do that here actually. No. Anyway. Let's just throw a reverb, just find the effect, reverb. We'll take that over to the end of this chain. We could also do a pre-reverb, but who cares? Preverb? Shorter, shorter. No, no, I like the wetness. I don't like it all wet. Are I know, but not about, all wet. Like, you're talking about time? N uh, the K, yeah. That's good, that's good. Now let's pull the wet out. 50-50. Cool. Subtlety. Cool. So now the bass is a little bit overwhelming, but using the same tool, I need to get rid of this chain view so it doesn't use my whole screen. Is this gonna, what's going on here? Hide. All right. We really need a beat, but we don't have a whole lot of time. Do you want to come back to this next week? You guys, it's almost time for Rockstar Academy. I wish I... Do I have, like, a drum loop lying around? Just to throw on top of this. Just something that I can kind of... What's horny morning dot a dot a? Wait, I don't see it. Oh, yeah. Some kind of horn sample. Oh. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah. That's funny. That's like, these drums um, sound great. I know, I have, like, a... There's some kind of breaks plug-in. No, 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 no. Don't, don't use their built-in stuff. We got this. I'm just looking for... There's like a vinyl collection or something like that. Give us a kick, give us a snare, and let's throw it down. There's no time, man. The show's over. Mm. Um, oh, I'm playing. I'm not playing see. anymore. I need some... Just one thing. I need to hear... 95? That's pretty close, if I can find it. Not that's bad. pretty good. Yeah. Let's do I'll, it. I'll buy that. So let's see if that's timed. I don't know. Let me solo this track really quickly and play the metronome. What the? It's close. It's not great. That's all right. We know how to warp. I've seen this in the past. Uh, we just go here to here. Beautiful. And really, that's all we need. Just one measure. I just want to get there. 
So one measure of that looped done. Um, and also I like to do the same thing here and kind of turn this down so it doesn't stomp on that. Cool. And that might work out. I don't know. Let's find out. Ready? Mm-hmm. Cool. You know what you need, dude. You need to side chain. What's up? All right. <laughs> That's beautiful. I love it. Anyway, thank you so much. This is a very, very short overview um, of how we, you know, let's make a beat really quickly in Ableton. I know I burned through a whole bunch of stuff. Please send me any questions that you have to bennettmintpotion.com. Um, check out our new forums. It's forum at forum.mintpotion.com. Um, we're building up a wiki. We're building up our site. There are a couple of things about this beat that bug me, but we can tweak it and keep it working. Um, I want to thank, I don't know, everybody. Whatever. It's time for uh, Rockstar Academy coming up in a minute. Thank you so much, Bennett, for rocking with me today. We'll do this again.